This video is going to go over Construction Documents 101, so a basic understanding of what construction documents are, what they entail of, and what you need to think about as you're creating them. So what is a construction document set exactly? Well, it's one of the most vital tools for communicating and laying out ideas, and it's something that's actually going to be built, like a new building. It looks like a giant book of these extra large sheets providing all the architectural, structural, mechanical, and electrical drawings that you need to construct a building. Now I've worked on projects that have had 100 plus pages in these sets, so yes, they can get large and in charge depending on the size of the building. They should be able to provide clear, concise, complete, and correct information. Wow, that's four C's in a row, guys. Uh, also that somebody can recreate what is actually being shown in the drawings. A CD set usually has its own symbols and its own language. So not only are you learning the software, but you're learning how we communicate construction and how we put that down on paper for somebody else to complete. These documents are legal contracts and they can be used as such in a court of law. So we also use them alongside what's known as a contract document. So all of the who's doing what, what's going where, all that information, there's a couple different types of contracts that are used when you're constructing a building. If something goes wrong with the project, these documents can be used in a court of law to provide evidence as to who was responsible for what so that the blame can go to the appropriate person. These documents can also be used in bidding and negotiations to actually hire contractors. So the CD set can be sent out to multiple people and the contractors come back and they give a price as to how much it would cost in order to actually complete the project and then contractors are selected from there. Alright, let's talk a little bit about the timeline of a construction document set. So they are usually created during schematic design phases, so after all the conceptual things have been figured out, that's when we can start formulating the final drawings that are going to take us from idea into finalization. CD sets can actually be updated throughout the design development phase as well. Uh, and I've also seen where addendums can be added even after the documents are issued. And basically an addendum is a change that happens after the drawings have been finalized and accepted. A licensed architect or a qualified project manager is usually in charge of a building project. So they work with a team of people. Uh, including CAD drafters, architectural interns, engineers, uh, interior designers, and a heck of a lot more people to help formulate their ideas. They gather information and then they start mapping out the details of what the building is going to look like. So the aesthetics, the function of the building, as well as the safety aspects of the building. So when a CD set is completed, the architect will sign off on the construction document set, a contractor is selected, and the building can begin. Now when the building has been built and the users have taken over the building, the CD sets are archived uh, both digitally, so we keep all of the CAD files, the Revit files, and we also make PDFs of the printed copies, but we also keep actual prints in tow and that ensures that multiple copies of the drawings are available to use should any remodeling need to happen to the building in future years. Now generally we develop two types of construction document sets. The first one is a permit set which is a basic set of drawings to help uh, a city planner see that the architect is complying with uh, a series of checklists basically to verify that the building is allowed to be built on the property and that it shows that it meets most of the minimum standards of safety and energy efficiency. This does not include detailed work, so a lot of the stuff that interior designers do is not typically included unless there's a special reason for it to be included. So in a permit set, you'll find things like site plans, basic floor plans. There might be some elevations involved, but you'll also see the mechanical, plumbing, and electrical information. Now once it's approved by a city official, a building permit is obtained and construction can begin. 
The second document that is created is the actual construction set itself. And so this is what I call the big daddy. You know, full construction drawings and documentation takes a lot longer to complete than the permit drawing. So the reason why is because we're including all the information. So the full specifications, all the details, the elevations, the millwork details, trim packaging, lighting, finishes, furniture, all that stuff is included in the construction set. So in order for this building to be built, the licensed architect is going to stamp and sign every single sheet of the construction document set because that signifies that they've reviewed it and they've approved of the project. There's a lot of responsibility in being an architect. So uh, just be aware of that if you're seeking out um, more architectural responsibilities. So each sheet in a set communicates technical drawings outlining what's needed to be built. So you'll see floor plans, you'll see elevations, you'll see sections and details, uh, you'll see a whole lot of schedules which are basically tables with typed information, and you'll see additional information like building codes that are met like occupancy and fire codes. There's specifications, um, and I'm going to get to that in here in just a moment as well as the location of the building, like there's just a lot of information included in a CD set. Now there's a, something called title blocks and every single sheet in a CD set has a title block on it. And it is essential for organizing the technical drawings of a project as well as the entire set itself. Now it can be set up for landscape or portrait justification, um, but for the most part I would say 98% of the time we use landscape. So in the title block you're going to see the project name and location, so the address, um, who is the architect or designer, and a place for their stamp and their signature. Uh, relevant issue and revision dates. So CD sets get released or issued at different stages. So sometimes there's a 50% issue, sometimes there's a 75% issue. It just means that the CD set's about 75% completed. Revision dates is any time that there's an addendum that happens after the architect has signed it and it just means that things are getting revised because as contractors start building they have to make decisions because the plans might not work as well as originally thought. So revisions are definitely part of the whole construction process. There's always a sheet name explaining exactly what that sheet is supposed to be communicating. And there's also a sheet number, again, just to help with the organization of the whole set. There's also an area in the actual title block where the technical drawings are going to be displayed and organized. So that's that big blank area that you see. And as you can see, there's a lot of different types of title block orientation. I think every single design firm is going to have their own version. Uh, so it's, it's kind of like a, a trademark of sorts. So just be aware that there might be a lot of different types of title blocks that you're going to be working with. There's also a border and it can be visible or invisible and it just helps us organize the drawings. It helps us know where all the printing boundaries are for the printers and it also helps us determine what side's going to get bound and what side's not. So binding is like a book, you know, how we put the whole set together as one. All right, so what sheets should or could be included in the architectural section of a construction document set? Well, there's always the cover sheet, which lists, again, the project name, the location. There could be a drawing index, so that's like a table of contents. Building permit information, key plan. Um, so a key is kind of like a visual guide as to what the symbols mean. There could be general notes as well as additional symbols. The names of all the consultants are usually on that page. Uh, it's got their contact information and who is actually in charge of the project. The index sheets are kind of like a second cover sheet and it can indicate things like partition types, door type elevations, door schedules, hardware groups. It might also contain ADA guidelines and illustrations of those ADA guidelines. So like how high should things be installed? How low should they be installed? What are the clearances? Things like that. It can also include life safety plans that show the exiting and code related information in case there's a fire we have to make sure that people can get out quickly and safely.
Now the information in between the cover sheets and the index can vary. There could be five pages, there could be one page. It kind of depends on the firm and the project and how much information that you need to display. There is something called a specification sheet. Not every construction document set has this because a lot of times they actually put together books outside of the construction set that kind of do specifications. But specifications are basically the quality parameters for materials and finishes. Like what quality of paint do you want? What's the sheen? What's the colors? What's the lifetime warranty of some of these things? So spec sheets are really an interior designer thing and it can either be in a separate book or in the set itself. Existing floor plans. So if the building is currently in existence and you're going to remodel it, it's, it's good to show the building as it is built prior to the remodel. So we also call these as builts in the field. So I just wanted to show you an example of a cover sheet which has a lot of information. But you can see there's a zoning plan, a site plan, they even added a perspective. So obviously this doesn't get completed until probably after the project has been worked through in the set. There's general notes, list of drawing, there's some reference symbols and some material hatching that you can see to help represent different materials in the drawings. So to continue on, there is a demolition floor plan that can be included in the set. Um, not every plan is going to have that because sometimes CD sets are new construction, so there's nothing to demolish. But basically a demolished floor plan helps delineate any partitions, doors, basically anything that's inside a building that's going to be demolished or taken out for a remodel. There's always a new construction floor plan where it indicates the placement of all new partitions. So partition is a wall, stairs, elevators, windows, doors, and anything that's going to remain if it's a remodel. So anything that's existing that's going to stay existing. Additionally, this plan is going to show where all built-in casework and plumbing is going to be located. A dimension floor plan is uh, the critical dimensions that are needed to determine where walls and doors are going to be actually installed. A lot of the things that are found on here um, will reference back to a door schedule that can also be included on this sheet, but honestly I've always seen them kind of separate because floor plans are usually pretty big. You need them big, especially on dimension plans, so you can read the dimensions. A reflected ceiling plan uh, graphically shows the ceiling treatments, the ceiling grids, if you have acoustical ceiling tiles, as well as the placement of all new light fixtures and those light fixtures that will be removed and relocated. So a light fixture legend and switch locations are typically included, but sometimes I've also seen them on separate sheets. So I just wanted to show you what a basic dimension plan looks like. As I said, large and in charge so that you can read the dimensions. And there's a lot of dimensions located exterior as well as interior. But you can see how it's formatted onto a title block and how there's notes and uh, drawing title and all that kind of stuff. So it's good to see what some of these sheets look like. All right, there's always elevation sections and detail drawing sheets included in a CD set. So any millwork or special construction, so and like cabinetry, built-in desks, built-in nooks, those kind of things. They all get a special section in the set. Finishes, furniture and equipment plans or schedules. Uh, oh my gosh, there can be so many different types of these and it really depends on the project and the project manager as to which one actually gets included in it. But graphically, these sheets indicate kind of the location of all of the new wall and floor finishes. Existing finishes also can be included as well as like furniture locations and how they should be arranged when they get to the job site. A finish legend and schedule is typically used to key in all finish specifications and again it's just a table and it's filled in with all the information of what's on the floor, what's on the walls, what's on the ceilings and then there's a key to help understand what those finishes are and how to go about ordering those finishes. There's always a room for specialized drawings so things like site plan, landscape plans, 
um, any plans that need to be zoomed in. So for instance, I worked uh, on a lot of hospitals and we would zoom in on like surgical rooms that had specialized equipment because you needed to really spell a lot of things out for those type of rooms. There can be for furniture systems. So like when you have cubicles, uh, there's systems that need to be set in place. And you can also have like equipment plans. So again, a hospital has a lot of equipment in their labs. So you have to get really specific as to where the equipment goes and how it sits in the space itself. And I just wanted to show you, this is a specialized drawing sheet that really outlines um, the building of stairs. You know, stairs is a very complicated structural element and they always need to have their own separate sheet. All right, so what sheets can be included in plumbing, mechanical, and electrical parts of the construction document set? So that's really important to know. There's the architectural stuff, but then there's all of these engineering stuff, the plumbing, mechanical, and electrical. So after the architectural sets, that's usually when the engineer uh, sheets come into play. They get their own cover sheets in each section of plumbing, mechanical, and electrical. Uh, they often include things like power and data and telephone plans, so how to wire in the walls for these things that are needed, electrical and lighting plans. Uh, we do some of that as an architect or designer, but they need to get a lot more technical in terms of like voltage and ohms and all that kind of stuff, so they get a lot more technical with their lighting plans. Mechanical plans, so things like the duct work, the heating and cooling systems, how are they integrated into the building and where do like the vents show up. Plumbing plans, of course you got hot and cold water systems that you need to control. How does the toilet uh, get to the sewer system? What are all the different types of plumbing lines that need to be installed? So those are pretty specific information. Uh, sometimes there are structural drawings that need to be included as well, so information for how to build the foundation, any of the footing, the beams, the loads. Um, I always call it natural disaster protection. So if there's something that needs to be in place for areas that are prone to earthquakes or floods or hurricanes, um, this is where all that information comes into play. I just wanted to show you a mechanical HVAC plan that kind of shows you what types of information and tables and notes and things that go into it. I can't read these to save my life, but I think they're pretty interesting. You can see where all the vents and stuff are in the ceiling. So there's a mechanical plan example for you. All right, so let's talk about in conclusion here, construction document sets are legal contracts and they show the details that are needed to actually build a building. Each set consists of sheets and the sheets house specific means of communication, be it an entire floor plan or the elevations of a specific area. Your job is to create and label technical drawings so that others can use them in order to build things. So your job is also to learn the software, you got to learn the language that construction speaks, and you got to learn the visual symbols that we use to help you find the drawings that you need to within the construction document set. Draw as accurately as possible, and I want you to label everything, even if you think it's obvious as to what it is. Leave no room for interpretation by any person looking at the construction document set. Make your drawings look professional, okay? Align things, organize them, stay consistent from sheet to sheet. So that includes the size of your text, the size of your symbols, uh, sheet to sheet, drawing to drawing. Keep all of your text readable. So don't put your text on top of other lines. Uh, try to make the text uh, separate from other areas. Construction documents can take a really long time to create. I was on a project once where the CD sets took a year and a half to make. So manage your time well when you're in school. And I think this is the most important thing. I want you guys to be kind to yourself throughout the learning process because you are balancing a lot when it comes to creating construction documents. So take your time, breathe, and be kind to yourself as you learn all of this information.